Yeah, I'm Jonathan Chu, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, professional violinist, uh, fiddle player. Um, love uh, to play music, encourage people through music. Um, currently on tour here in the States and as well as internationally, so it's a lot of fun. Fun to call Memphis home, uh, fun to get to, to play music around the world. One of my first memories of picking up the instrument was, what is this? <laughs> what, what is this thing? I remember picking up the instrument uh, when I was younger and it meant one thing, but then after that moment of really making music and seeing people just light up with it, um, that's when I fell in love with the instrument. That's when I fell in love with the violin. Oh, when I look out into the audience every night playing for people, the heart behind why I play is when I look out to the audience and want to see something, it's mostly just our people connecting. By the end of the night, I'm like, I hope people have journeyed with us um, from stage, like that we are sharing our hearts with people, whether that's verbally through a song or whether myself, like playing a nonverbal instrument, that, that the music connects with you in a way that like helps you experience feelings. Uh, whether that's happiness, sadness, whatever. If you experience something along the path of the journey of the concert, then I've done my job and I've done it well. For speed, can you give me a clap? Perfect, all right, go for it. So that was the GFX 102 for video, and I have some thoughts. My name is Andrew, welcome to the Lens Runners channel, and Happy New Year, my friends. How are we feeling? First things first, let's talk about the bad. Honing in on the interview section that you saw earlier, honestly, the footage looked identical. Why is this bad? Well, from a upgrade standpoint, this raises some concerns. I believe that it looks similar because they both share the same 102 megapixel medium format sensor. That makes a lot of sense, but that does raise a lot of questions, especially if you are a GFX 100S owner currently, you might be thinking to yourself, if it looks that good, what's the point? So my thought is twofold, right? It is bad if you're looking to upgrade. It's not bad if you want just beautiful looking footage and you want to have consistency across two different camera bodies. So more on upgrading a little bit later. Next up, let's talk about quality. And I'm going to be the first one to say it. This one is on me. So I can't fault the camera for this, but this is important for you to see. I pulled some stills that I want you to check out. And if you can see here, we have some very strange color casts, pixelation, and just overall like nasty looking footage. I talked with Ryan, the Lens Rentals producer and video strategist, and he had this to say, using long op is great if you're trying to save space, which I was, but unfortunately it does produce some quality issues. I never shoot long op. I always shoot all intra, but the Fuji gave me the option to shoot it. And I had a lot more recording time on the SD cards that I was using. So I thought, hey, let's risk it. Let's save some space. Let's not explode my computer and this is what happens. A little pro tip that Ryan dropped for me that I wanna to give to you is that if you are shooting in log op, then you definitely should shoot in a Rec. 709 color profile. Shooting in log is great. I love the color correction options that I have, but the long op codec, since it is a lower quality image, really struggles, and I think that's what we're seeing today. One last note that I didn't actually get any footage of, but I wanted to make sure I communicated was that as we were getting started, Jonathan and I were playing around with the camera. And every time we went to review, the camera would completely freeze. The fix for this was literally taking the battery out of the camera, resetting the whole thing. Luckily, I didn't lose files, nothing was corrupted, but it did make me a little bit uneasy. I'm wondering if this is simply a software update that needs to happen, or if the camera is feeling overloaded. Though I will say, once we got to actually filming, this didn't happen again. Just thought this was worth mentioning. 
So let's move on to the good. And the very first thing is that this camera was enjoyable to film with. I've never thought to grab a medium format camera to use for video. Full frame or APS-C camera sensors are usually what I use. So using a medium format camera was pretty cool. Another thing I need to say is back to the note of upgrading. If you have a GFX 100S and you're looking at the GFX 102 or you're looking to see which one you might want to test or rent, here's where I might recommend the upgrade. The GFX 102 has a lot of great codecs that allows you to do a lot of impressive filming directly inside of the camera. So there's no need for external HDMI monitors that have recording features. This is really great if you are trying to utilize this camera for a main cam, if you're using it on set, if you're a hybrid shooter who wants a little higher video quality, the GFX 102 can bring that to you. The GFX 102 also has F-Log2, and I went ahead and shot the playing sequence with F-Log2 and the interview sequence with just traditional F-Log. The color grading was enjoyable. Yes, I struggled with those artifacts and things like that, but overall, I love color grading Fuji video. It looks so good. You can get rich colors out of it. And when it worked and when I wasn't fighting bad codecs, things look great. And lastly, I have to say that the overall user experience, I'd rate it very high. I have the camera in my hand, a strap around my neck, hand holding, using it. I never felt like it was cumbersome. There's a lot of great dials on the front and back of the camera that allow me to change settings quickly. And honestly, I was just like smiling while using this camera. I felt confident with it in my hands, and I really wasn't worried that it was going to get me the results that I wanted. Again, outside of user error, it was a great experience. All in all, beautiful medium format video with the GFX 102 is incredibly possible. It's right at your fingertips as long as you don't use the wrong codec. And with that, I want you to leave your comments down below what you think about both cameras. Is it worth the upgrade to you? Do you want to get your hand on GFX 102? Let me know. And if you are trying to test it out, if you're trying to rent it before you invest a lot of money in it, there's a link down below as well where you can check it out at lensrentals.com. Next week, we're doing a full side-by-side -side comparison, literally just like a white sheet comparison with the GFX 100S and the GFX 102. So you're not going to want to miss that. And that is all I have to say. So I'll see you then. All right. Peace.